Well, hello, hello, hello. The objective of this video is to do a hypothesis test when we have paired data. So what we're about to do is a paired t-test. So turn to your notes, page 27. Oopsie, I mean page 26. So as we look at this, let's just briefly talk about what it is and jump into a problem. Okay, we are looking for inference of the means when we look at paired data. So what we're doing is we, um, this can first of all be used on observational um, data or experimental data. What is a paired t-test? When you make two observations about the same individual, meaning like a pre and post test, a before and after test. I remember when my daughter went to Sylvan, they gave her a diagnostic test at the beginning, and then they gave her at the end when um, the testing was, when her year was over there at, um, at Sylvan. So that was the idea of the pre and post. Teachers give pre and post all the time to see what you started off, um, what knowledge you had prior to the beginning of the instruction, and then they give you a test at the end to see what your growth is. Okay, um, a couple other examples. Well, let me finish this. Okay, so making two observations of the same individual. Here, one observation on each of the two similar individuals. And that's what we talked about today. The idea, yeah, the individual is the man versus woman. You can consider them similar because what they had in terms of similarity is we were looking at the idea of um, their buying power, or maybe I should say the lack thereof. How um, in this particular AP problem that we were discussing today, um, comparing men versus women, and um, that's one observation, which is the buying power given on two similar individuals. Well, the similar individuals would be the male and the female. Um, another type of paired um, data would be just, just an example, poor environment versus good environment. Um, and here, so we're talking about if a family moves into one area um, to see how their kids prosper, both socia social, like, um, socially and um, academically, um, in the two different environments. So those are just some basic ideas of paired data. What procedure do we use? A paired T procedure. In a paired T procedure, it looks the same as the other stuff. It's nothing but a test statistic in which we have T is going to equal the mean, okay, difference minus the mean. And actually here, I'm just going to just tell you straight up, that's always zero. Okay, and it's going to be over the standard deviation of the difference divided by the square root of n, in which n, remember, is the, is the number of observations or the number of scenarios, not the number of people. Okay, so we perform this about the mean difference. And here, as we can see, our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis. Our null is always equal to, and basically we're saying that there is no difference. And our, and our alternative hypothesis can be is greater than, is less than, or not equal to. So, let's go on. Um, let's pay attention to this AP point. Here, it just reminds us you're going to be given two sets of data, but you're looking for the difference. So, since you're going to be finding the difference, that is the one graph that you should be using because we don't want to have any YJLP. We don't want to lose any points. Okay, let's go to page 29 now. Read the scenario. Now, welcome back. They give us that as a paired t-test. They tell us that. Here we're looking for the difference um, in recall when we have the 30 students in music versus silence. Each subject was given um, 10 minutes to do the memorization of the 20 words um, while in music. So once in music and then once in silence. So those 20 students were both given the treatment, the treatment being with music and the other treatment, which you might want to say is the control, which is the silence. 
it yielded a, a test statistic of a negative 3.01 at this low p-value right here. So our null hypothesis and our, and our alternative hypothesis is that there is, remember, they're saying that there is no difference. And here, our alternative is that, yeah, the music is going to have less of a recall because I'm looking at this right here, and that's why I know it's less. Okay, remember, like I said before, mu d is no difference, and um, or basically we're saying it's going to be the same between the music and the silence. Our degree of freedom is going to be the same based on the sample size of n. Remember the number of scenarios, because there were 30 people, they just happened to receive... Um, they just happen to receive two different treatments. So here, we're looking at sample size of 30. And our interpretation. As we interpret our p-value, so assuming that the HO is true, and here in red I'm having that the HO is the average number of recalls, is the same, remember that's what the HO represents, um, given the above-mentioned methods, which is the music versus the silence, there's a 0.27% probability of getting a mean difference as small or even smaller than the observed um, mean difference by chance. So this was a really good problem, um, bringing in the, the basis of a paired t-test and just reminded us of how to interpret our p-value. As we go to the next page and continue this problem, here we're talking about type 1, type 2 errors, um, which mistake could students um, have made based on it. Remember, type 1 is rejecting the, um, the null hypothesis and supporting it in an error. So here, we're trying to confine, find convincing evidence that the number of words recalled um, given music was less than that in silence when the bottom line is we're wrong. There is no difference. Your type 2 is, remember, you're going to support the HO, K, and re, um, reject the HA in error, which means that we found evidence that there is no difference. We're supporting the HO in the recollection when, in fact, silence is better because we here we reject, we supported the HO when we should have supported the um, alternative, that it is better. Okay, now wrapping up, so we've wrapped up this problem. Now let's do a complete pair test. Okay, open your book to page 598. Here's one of your homework problems, number 85. So go ahead and read the scenario, right hand versus left hand. So this is all about right-handed student turning the knob with their um, right hand and um, seeing how the indicator reacts. And at the same time, um, we have, I should have mentioned, 25 right-handed students. And then they um, followed the identical instructions. Um, and then they tried, okay, the other, they tried to turn it with their um, left hand. And here we've got 25 students, and 25 students used the instrument. So the bottom line here is that you've got 25 students doing both treatments. And yes, the treatments were given in random order. We're going to talk about the importance of that one really quickly. Okay, and um, please remember here we had a sample of 25. So yes, this is going to be a paired T. So let's talk about really quickly, why is it important to randomly assign the order of the knobs? Okay, the bottom line here is that if they all use the right hand, they're all going to have similar expectations. Well, I use my right hand first, so you used your right hand first. Okay. Um, and with that um, um, 
that dexterity that you have in your hand, you don't know what it's really due to. If it's due to, um, I use the hand that I use the most, okay, which I write with all the time that I'm tired or might have cramped, or is it because there's really a, a true difference in the knobs? So that's what I said. And you can look to your book if you want to to see, because they're talking here about if all the subjects use their right hand threads first, then they, um, and they were tired when they used the left, then they don't know if the reason they had problems with it was because of the, the threading or because they were tired. Okay, yeah, whatever the book says. Okay, anyway. Now, let's look at here. It says carry out. We want to go right-handed. People find that right-handed threads are easier on average. You want to carry out a test at 5% um, alpha level, significance level. Okay, so please notice right here that you have all this information, and we're going to have to put this in the calculator. Now, you can do this in one of two ways. The bottom line is this is a paired test. So since it's a paired test, because remember, the treatment... Two treatments were given to one person. Specifically, 25 people received two treatments. So that tells you it's a paired test. Okay, so here you can put this in your L1 and your L2 if you'd like and have the L3 do the difference. You can do whatever you would like. And here, when I look at mine, let me get out of that. Here we go. So this is what I had. Oh, and to do it up here, let me let me clear this for a second. I'm going to go L2 minus L1. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want to do it quickly, and I'm just going to follow the numbers in the book because I'm just going to show you the answers based on the book information in a minute. So, But when I plug this into the calculator, I'm going to go L2 minus L1. And we can see it down there and press Enter, and it's going to populate those answers. L3 is what we need. So, now I'm just going to continue for a minute before we even write down all of our plans and stuff like that. Let's go to stat. Okay, over to test, t-test. Here, I've got my data. So, remember, I'm highlighting right here where it says data. That's better. And here, my mu, remember my mu d, we're saying that there is no difference. Okay, but I'm being a little premature, but I'm going to stick with it. Here is my... Um, difference in L3 because I care less about the rest and here we don't touch that and yes we do need to know this okay so fine we do have to look at we are looking to see if the left hand is greater than the right that is what we're looking for so since we're looking for that that gives us the greater than. So, yeah, being a little premature is wasn't good in this case. But I just wanted to show you here, we've talked about this before. Here is all of our data. So, now let's do the state plan do conclude. Okay, so here, state, mu d is equal to zero. Remember, the bottom line is we're saying that there's no difference um, whether you use the left or the right. Okay, but their point is, is yeah, we believe that um, the left-handed is harder, okay, because here they said the right-handed find it easier, okay, going with the left-handed is harder. Why did the book do it this way? I don't know. Left-handed harder which means it's going to take more time, which means it's greater than that. Please notice here we defined what mu d is, and this is really important. You've got to tell me straight up left minus right. You've got to tell me. You've got to tell me. Okay? Our plan. Here is a pair of t-tests for the um, mean difference. Random treatments, it was stated, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, Yeah using both instruments in random order. So it was stated. Now, let's look at our um, box plot to determine if I see any skewness or um, any extreme skewness or any outliers. I don't know about you, but I have my information in my L3, so remember, you've got to change that because I don't care about what's happening with the right hand 
right thread or the left thread. I care only about what the difference is, so I have to put in the L3. And here is my box plot. Why is that axis there? I don't know. Don't care right now. Okay. And you can see by tracing it all your values. Okay. So, yeah, we can see a slightly skewed and it's no outliers. So, let's talk about, let's um, finish off our, our plan. Okay. So, no outliers, no strong skewedness. I can use a T distribution. Now, next. Our 10% rule does not apply when it comes to experiments because what is it going to be 10% of 10% of the difference? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, so yes, having your randomness and the out idea of outliers um, or the lack thereof establishing whether it's um, um, I can use a T distribution is sufficient. So now I want to go to the do. Okay, so here's our formula. We're going to take the, and here, you know I um, did the test. It's a t-test. I'm just going to take the values and plug it in, come up with my, use that information they gave me for my t. We're going to determine if we're going to reject, um, fail to reject, and then continue. Okay, so here's my test statistic for my t, here's my p-value that I got out of my calculator. Here, the degree of freedom, they like you to name that. So now, it looks like I'm going to reject because that's a really low p-value. So let's do our conclusion. So we are saying here, we've got our um, alpha level compared to our, I'm sorry, our p-value compared to our alpha level. We're going to reject the the null hypothesis, so we have convincing evidence that um, it does take more time to turn the knob with the left threads. Because remember, we rejected the null, we supported the alternative. The alternative is that it took more time. Okay, guys. TTFN. Ta-ta for now. Peace out.